Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, I've got an Asus Chromebook here. This is a C, uh, C433T Chromebook and it's been liquid damaged. Um, so Chromebooks tend to be rabbit holes so I don't really look at them for much repair work but I took the bottom cover off of this one and saw some very distinctive liquid damage around this area. So let's take a closer look at this and see if we can bring this thing back to life. So let's take a look at this guy under the microscope and find, there it is. So there's our liquid damage. We've got a very, very angry looking section around here. And if we move south a bit toward the display connector here, just lift that up, we've got very angry looking section there as well. Uh, so oh, yeah, there's a lot, man. So I don't know if this thing is savable. But what we're going to do is we're going to start out by just clearing any short circuits we can see and seeing if it comes good. Um, so this is a tough call because part of me wants to just throw this straight into the ultrasonic cleaner and see what comes good. Um, however, the other part of me wants to reflow this with flux um, and just let that just redo all of the solder joints um, first as well. They're both valid. Um, they're both valid approaches. Um, a lot of people tend to go for the reflow first um, because while the damage is in front of them, they can see what needs to be fixed. Whereas once you go into the ultrasonic, you start removing the signs and the evidence, and you don't know what else needs to be done. Um, but on the flip side, like I'm looking at this amount of work and going like, oh man, just surely it's worth just cleaning all of that off first and then seeing where we stand. Um, let's see. Firstly, let's just see if we what, what screamingly obvious short circuits we have. So I will put the multimeter into resistance mode. And I'll put one probe on ground. And let's just start having a look around here. So this capacitor is almost certainly burnt out. Right, so we've got what looks like ground, and on the other side, open. What about this guy next to it? Open as well. Okay. Just going to have a quick dig through all of this horridness here. Killer ohms as well. You know, it's hard to tell. Ah, there we go. If I get right down underneath that capacitor, then we've got our short circuit. So yeah, this this rail is shorted, whatever this is doing. We need to look up what that chip is um, to find out. If we see what that's powering, hard to tell. So there's a short circuit there. Then down here, this is backlight power coming down here, so this is almost certainly shorted out as well. Again, we'll go black probe onto a screw hole, and we'll just have a quick poke down here. So, eh? Yeah, that is ground, and the other side... Oh, I lied. That's our ground plane anyway there. So it's this side that we need to be not shorted. Oh, it's hard to tell. There's so much just... There's so much guff in there that it's difficult to get a good connection. No, I don't think that's shorted. Okay. This probably just looks angry because there was a lot of power there. What about this guy up here? It's hard to even see where the edge of that chip is. Yeah, that guy's not shorted either. So there's a lot of corrosion around here, but not an actual fault, which is good. Uh, what about this stuff here? That's ground. Other side is not ground, so that guy's okay as well. 
and this MOSFET down here. Let's just go onto the back of these capacitors. There is a bit of a conformal coating as there tends to be with motherboards. Yeah, that's not shorted. The other side will probably be ground. Yeah. All right, so all of these areas here, they look really upset and angry, but there's no short circuits there. Now, that doesn't mean there's no problem, but it's certainly a good sign. And again, if we travel up here, we do have a short circuit in this area. So maybe there's a good chance that if we clear that short circuit, we'll actually be okay. So what I might do is just clear that and see if it switches on. Um, I might just do a little bit of brushy brushy down there just to get the worst of that corrosion off as well and then we'll go from there but yeah let's get the let's get the motherboard out of this thing so we'll pop all the connections out I shall undo the screws and we will release this boy and then we can get to the soldering rework The bottom of the motherboard is as clean as a whistle, so that's a good sign. Looks like if we can resolve what's visible, there's a good chance that that's all there is to this. Right, so I'm going to stick a bunch of flux on there. We're going to remove this very angry looking capacitor first because that's probably our culprit. So we'll just take him off and we're just going to reflow the entire area and just boil all of this crud away and we'll see what we end up with. Oh god, alright, back up, back up. We're losing a trace there. Oh, something's really wrong there. Uh, okay, right, let's come in again and just be gentle. Oh, this guy's welded himself onto the trace. Come on. Hmm. Oops. Oh, balls. Just knocked that guy loose. Oh my days. Okay, let's see if we can ow. Let's see if we can soldering iron that out. Gosh, that's proper welded himself into place. Come on. I don't want to pull this trace off, but I might have to. Yeah, that's welded on. I'm going to cut the trace. 
The trace is screwed anyway. Right, well that didn't go very well. Let's clean the area up and just see what's actually going on in there. Okay, well, the trace is gone. So that comes around and connects to here. That's still metal. There's a via there. Are we still shorted? Ground. Not ground. Okay, well the good news is we're not still shorted. What's the story with that via? Okay, whatever it is, it's not shorted. Okay, what about these guys up here? Not shorted, and top should be ground. Yep, that's all good. Yeah, okay. So the capacitors that we took off the board Okay, that one's fine wherever it just went. That one's reading open line but it might have just blown open entirely. Because also I'd expect to see some resistance. All right, oh, these things are so messed up it's hard to tell. Whatever. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to brush down the rest of the board. I'm going to plug it in and see if it start and see if there's any power there. Um, now it might be unstable as hell with these um, bypass capacitors missing, but I just want to see if there's any sign of life at all. Um, so we'll give this a bit of a <sighs> screw. This I'm lobbing this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Just this board is in just ugh, yeah no. Ultrasonic time. Right, one ultrasonic clean later, and as you can see, that has really cleaned up. Um, so this area looks much better as well, and down here next to the connector, we've really cleaned up all of that crud that was across all of this circuit. Um, and, you know, all this stuff over here, all nice and shiny now. Uh, I actually wish I'd opened up with the ultrasonic clean first. It will, It would have erased all of the evidence, but because we looked at it and took pictures, or a video in this case, first, we would have been able to refer back to that information to see what areas we needed to look at. Um, and that might have given me a clearer shot at removing those capacitors without damaging the trace. So that was, um, I think that was my bad. I think that was more than doable without damaging the trace. The capacitor had welded itself down, which does make it difficult to remove. But had I not had all of that junk around it so I could see what I was doing more, we might have had better luck there. Um, but yes, in any case, um, I'm going to plug this in and see if it turns on. I managed to get a measurement on one of the capacitors. One of them was dead short. The other one was not shorted, but in sufficiently poor condition that I'm not putting it back on the board. Did manage to get a read. It's our old friend, the 22 microfarad. So there is a very, very good chance that they're both 22 microfarad capacitors. Um, I did look for schematics, couldn't find any for this board. So what I'm going to do is we're going to see if this thing turns on first. And if we get anything out of it, then I'll throw on a couple of new 22 microfarad capacitors. We might also need to connect up that via with a jumper wire as well. So um, we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. Let's see if this does anything first of all. Right, that's all the critical stuff connected. Uh, let's start out by just plugging in some power and seeing if it will charge the battery. So I'm going to connect the battery back up. And we'll plug a Type-C charger into the side. Right, upside down charger go, and it's charging at 5 volts 3 amps. 
Um, now, for a laptop, I would expect it to go up to a higher voltage, but for a Chromebook, maybe it does just charge at 5 volts. Uh, I don't know. The back says the input is 15 volts, 3 amps. Unless it's because the battery is very low. I'm going to check the battery voltage just to see what state the battery is in. It might be that it's in like a, uh, a trickle charge mode because the battery is stone dead. Battery is at 10.67 and it's a 3 cell. So 10.67, that's not stone dead. If I unplug that, what does the battery fall down to? It was charging. Because now the battery is drooped. And the battery is, uh, it's not critically low, but it's down at like sort of 3.3 kind of thing. I don't know. Let's see if it turns on. I don't know what to make of that. We have a charge indicator on the left-hand side as well. So yeah, maybe it is just charging at 5 volts. That seems very wrong to me. Maybe it goes on to a higher power level when it switches on. So let's try turning it on. Okay, it didn't seem to respond to the power button. I don't think we've got a power light on this thing. Oh, we do. It's on the power button. No response from the power button. I think I'm going to give it some time to charge and see what it does. Okay, I had to come back to this one. However, I've got a bit more information and uh, I've done a little bit more poking around. So what I discovered was, firstly, although it charged up, it didn't... Well, it was kind of slow charging, but it didn't want to turn on. Um, which was kind of what I expected, to be honest. So I had a closer look at things. Um, the uh, the capacitors we removed, one of them was indeed dead short, and the other one was still okay, and it read a 22 microfarad. So it's our good friend, the 22 microfarad 0802 capacitor. So uh, we know what we're going to replace these two capacitors with now. Um, so the last problem now is this via here. Um, so I wasn't sure if that was uh, supposed to be connected to an internal layer or whether that was just a broken via. Um, and I had a look back at the start of my footage and it's very obvious that this trace was connecting across here and over to this via with the capacitors along the way. So we do need to hook that guy back up. But there's nothing to solder to anymore. Like again, here is my little fingernail to give you a size comparison for how big that is. There's not there's not enough metal to, to solder to there. Um, so we need to replace these capacitors and we need to get that via reconnected. Now we're actually, or rather I'm actually fairly lucky. So if we turn the board over, I'll just mark this position with my with my finger here. I turn this over. And I look along a little bit, we can actually see the other side of the via right here, and it connects through to there. So we can actually connect a jumper wire up to that test pad there, and then run the via back in again. So this means that we can actually reconnect everything. Actually connecting up the uh, um, actually connecting up the um, capacitors won't be a problem because we can just put some wire or something across there. No problem. So we just need to put two capacitors in here, connect them with a wire onto this pad here, and then run the via around, and we should have everything back to how it was. And because we've removed a shorted capacitor, the laptop should theoretically work, provided that everything else is okay. So let's get to it. I'm going to start by putting two capacitors on the board. We're only going to solder them on one side, then we're going to connect them with a jumper wire on the other side. Move those to one side. I'll put some flux down and we'll tin up those pads with some fresh solder. All right, and we come and one of them has just jumped straight to the iron, which is what we want. Uh, I need them both to let go now. Uh, 
Come on, move, but don't touch the other one, otherwise that'll move as well. Damn it. I had one job. This angle is not the best, if I'm honest. How did I make a hash of that? It was two capacitors going on to two pads. It doesn't get any easier than that. We are working on a ground pad here, which is why it's being awkward with me. More flux, Governor! Oh my days. Do I really need to hot air this? I shouldn't need to hot air this. Come on, get the heat onto the board. Alright, now we'll turn that around, and I've got some just ordinary wire here, which I've stripped the end of, and we'll use this to make a jumper wire. I've got some, um, uh, like, magnet wire, however, we want some fairly thick stuff for these, so I'll tin the ends of these guys up. Solder this guy on. This is hideous. Can we get it on the end? That's still hideous. More flux, governor! That's better. And now we just need to solder blob down the end here. There we go. And the side cutters. That's that. So now we just need to connect up um, our. Now we just need to connect up that via again. So now I'll get the the thin boy wire, and we'll flip the board over. Now we need to get this onto there. Cut the end of the wire off so we've got some nice clean bit. And I'll put a little bit of flux on there and try and tin the pad first. Because you can't really tin magnet wire. Well, you can, but it would be easier if there was some solder already on the pad. That'll do. Now, for thicker magnet wire, you kind of have to try and strip it first. But for the really thin stuff like this, the solder will just melt through the, um, the enamel coating on it. So we don't have to do anything. There we go, that's on. So now it sticks out the back, and we've got to bring it up and over. Uh, let's see. Let's go this way round again. Up and over to there. There we 
we go. And there's our jumper wire. Ugh. All right. Now I shall give that an alcohol brushy brushy. Very carefully, I might add. I'm not being very careful here. However, if it can survive the brushy brushy, then that means it's a good connection. If it can't survive a brushy brushy, then it probably wasn't good enough, to be honest. There we go. Okay, I'm not going to be too rough with it. I'll put some, um, if this works, I'll put some uh, uh, conformal coating over this. There we go. So there's a bit of an ugly solder blob there. However, we have replaced a trace, effectively. Ah, are you joining where you shouldn't, or is that just a shadow? That's a shadow, that's fine. There's no join there. Good. So of course, what I really would have loved to know is if I tore up that trace through carelessness because I was trying to pull off that capacitor or whether I was just doomed there and this was inevitable. However, either way, we've managed to repair the damage and that's the important thing. You know, accidents will happen, but if you can fix the damage, then you're okay. I'd still like to uh, clean up that last bit a little bit better. Right, let's put this board back in the laptop and see where we're up to. Uh, I think that's enough for us to do a test run. Connect battery. Pow. Right, it didn't spark and catch fire. That's a good start. Uh, let's see, I need my energy meter. Let's see what it does for charging. There we go, there's 15 volts. That's very healthy looking. That's proper charging, excellent. Now, will it turn on? Uh, let's give it power again. And our survey says... Ah, beautiful. It lives. There we go. Excellent. That's a working laptop. So, um, we just needed to clear up the corrosion and get rid of that shorted capacitor. The complication here was that we just pulled off a trace while trying to do that. So I'd have been curious to know is if I maybe I would have had a better time if I'd um, if I'd either just toothbrushed it first or ultrasonicked it first, um, rather than trying to um, reflow away all the corrosion, which is what I see other people do. A lot of people, I see them just go straight in with flux and solder and hot air and just boil away all the corrosion. Whereas from I, I tried to do that and it didn't go very well. And I feel like I would have had better luck if I'd gone for either alcohol and toothbrush or ultrasonic first. So let me know what you guys think. The people in the, people in the comments who know more about the, uh, this work than I do, what would you have done there and where do you think I stepped wrong? However, in any case, we managed to link up the damage and now the laptop works again. So um, that's a win. There's one thing left to do now is um, I'm going to get out my um, uh, my conformal coating because I don't get to use it very often. And we're just going to put a little conformal coating on our jumper wire just to essentially glue it down in place. So let's turn this back off again and we'll do that. Okay, so I've got some UV uh, conformal coating here. I'm not very practiced with this stuff, so if this looks a little bit shabby, then please don't laugh at me. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spooge a little bit on there just to effectively glue this wire down in place.
Oh, that's way too much. Oh, no. Ah. That was approximately way too much. It came out suddenly. Let's uh, clean up the tip first. This stuff doesn't dry, it's UV curing, so we've got time. All right, let me just quickly get the cap on. And I'm just going to pull some of that off with the screwdriver. It's not permanent, this stuff. It is removable. There we go. That's a bit better. So we'll cure that in place, and that will effectively just make a, a blob of glue, effectively, that will just stick this down in place, just so someone casually brushes across that while doing maintenance on the laptop. They won't completely balk it. Uh, and now somewhere in here, I've got a, a little UV torch to cure that with. All right, behold, UV light. I'm going to shine this UV light on there to cure it. Uh, this isn't a real, this is just like the top of a UV torch, FYI, because the torch itself uh, was um, damaged by a burst battery. Um, and uh, I was not able to save the torch, so I just saved the top with the UV LED in it, and I'm just powering this from a bench power supply. I should buy a proper one, but I don't actually use this very often, so... I think this is only the second time I've ever used this in anger, actually. There we go. I think that'll do it. Disco, 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 disco. All right, so now we've got a little hard coating. Now, it'll be a little bit soft under there, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to go hard all the way through or not. However, it's got just a little hard cap over it, so just a casual brush won't just immediately tear that wire off anymore. So, yeah, I'm looking for advice on how best to do this as well. Like, I don't think that's very tidy. That's made a bit more of a puddle than I wanted to. Um, so I'm I'm looking for tips on, on that how and how you guys would have handled it. In the meantime, let's put the rest of the screws in. There we go, everyone. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.